Water bath canning is a way of preserving fruits and vegetables so that you can get that fresh taste all year long, maybe even keep them at room temperature for a year or two. Um, the difference between water bath canning and pressure canning is that in a water bath, you just simply boil water a uh, certain distance, about an inch, make sure above the, um, the jars that you just finished filling. And that will essentially seal them and make them good to go for a while, as long as you follow the recipe and all the instructions. Pressure canning requires a pressure canner and putting things under pressure. And I've never actually done that before. Um, hopefully in the next year or two, I will get a pressure canner and try it. But for many of the foods that we care about, like salsas and jams, all you need to do is water bath canning. It's, it's something really fun. I loved, I'm a foodie, I love food, and to be able to make my own salsas and perfect them and, and know what's in them and know that all the produce came from down the road, that's just is really exciting. And I feel like it makes a really, really cool gift to be able to give something to someone that you made from, especially if you can do local produce, from the peak of season, maybe even pick it yourself. Like, how cool is that? These are the tools I use when canning. We have our massive canning pot, which has a rack inside so that I can lift up the whole set of jars if I want to. I don't tend to, but it also keeps the jars from resting right on the bottom. Um, most important thing is that it's really tall, so I can can some pretty tall jars. Of course, jars, new lids, a canning funnel. Like I said, this one's really nice because it shows you your headspace when it's on the jar and it prevents the lid of the jar, the rim of the jar from getting messy. A jar lifter. Nifty little magnet tool to get the uh, lids and things out of the bands out of the boiling water when they're sterilized. A ladle to pour whatever salsa I'm making into my jars and something to take the air bubbles out. This is just a little silicone spatula. You can get special tools for this, but this works just as well, just scraping along the side. So the first step in this process for me is getting my canner on the stove full of water heating up because our stove takes freaking forever to heat anything, so this is gonna take quite a long time. And this is the most important part of the whole process because this is where I'm gonna sterilize my jars, one, because we don't have a dishwasher, mm -hmm. and then actually do the water bath canning process once I make the salsas. So all this is is a very large pot where I can fit quite a few jars and a rack to keep the jars off of the bottom um, and also to help lift them up if I need help. They just have to have enough height that you can get an inch above a jar resting on a rack at the bottom, because that's how you can properly seal the cans. Let's get this boiling. Um, other than that, a funnel to help you get whatever you're putting into the jar into it safely. Um, and then it's really useful to have a jar lifter so that you can lift the jars in and out of the boiling water easily and not have to worry about dropping them and burning yourself and all of that stuff. While I'm waiting for that big pot of water to heat up so I can sterilize my jars, I'm going to start my first recipe um, and get to chopping and jalapenos, so love, so I don't get the hot peppers in my eyes. This recipe is from the ball book actually says to do three cups of jalapenos without the seeds and ribs, so it's a lot less spicy. Last year I accidentally, didn't read that part, and used the seeds and ribs, and it was the perfect amount of spice for us for a nice spicy salsa. So I'm doing the same thing this year. I'm keeping all the seeds in there to make a nice spicy salsa. In to get sterile. So that's gonna keep coming up to a boil and I'm just gonna leave the jars in there until I'm ready to fill them and that way they're nice and sterile when I fill them up. And then I'll put them back in once they're all sealed to water bath and seal up. So a lot of people will use a dishwasher and their oven to sterilize their jars. I use the traditional method that's in this book, which involves putting the jars into the canner, bringing them to a boil and letting them boil for five minutes open and then draining them and immediately putting in the hot salsa, in this case, into the sterilized jar. 
um, so I don't have to worry about anything being in the jar. So you get the salsa all prepared, you boil water to get the skins off the tomatoes, chop everything up, cook the salsa for the appropriate amount of time and make sure it gets to the right temperature. So in this case, 180 degrees so that you kill anything that might have been on the tomatoes and everything like that. So we're making tomato salsa this morning. Um, I don't really like skins in my salsa, so I'm just gonna make X's in the bottom of these tomatoes and throw them in some boiling water so I can peel as much of the skin off as possible before I chop it up and get it into the salsa, so. That's too nice, thin, my knife is not sharp. <laughs> See how the skin is like peeling off. Peeling off. So while that's happening, the jars are sterilizing. I also have a little pot with the lids and the bands that are also getting sterilized. So once all of those things are ready, it's time to can. Okay, we've done the jalapenos and the tomatoes. So now the rest of the salsa ingredients include onion, garlic, cilantro, oregano, salt, cumin, and vinegar. So let's get all that into the pot. recommend, because I had never canned up until last year, a book such as this one. This is what a lot of people recommended to me. This is the Ball Blue Book for preserving, guide to preserving. So it has both water bath canning and pressure canning recipes in here. It also has lots and lots of instructions about the jars you use, um, an altitude chart to help you, because the amount of time you water bath can changes based on your altitude. And since recipes are written for sea level, if you live at 4,500 feet like we do, you have to add more time in order to properly can. It also talks about botulism and the other bad, scary things about canning that was holding me back for years, um, and how to make sure you avoid that and you have safe canning practices. Um, this book and any of the other tools that I use while canning today um, are in our Amazon store. And we'll make sure to link to that in case you're interested. For this recipe, you need to bring it to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and keep it at around 180 for 10 minutes. That temperature um, kills off any bacteria that might be on the produce so that you're not jarring bacteria. So, important step. You can reuse jars as long as you've inspected them and make sure that there's no chips or anything. You can you reuse the bands as long as they're not rusty and they look fine, but you really should replace the lids every time you do some new canning because they're not guaranteed to seal otherwise. And you want your cans to obviously seal so that you can, they last. So you take the cans out or the jars out of the canner and bring them over to your sauce pot. You then fill the jars. This recipe calls for a half an inch of headspace to ensure that things don't expand and explode while you're canning. Um, and what's nice is the little funnel I have actually showed you that. So I fill the jars up to the half inch headspace. Inch of headspace. Make sure there's not many air bubbles. Then you take the lids and the bands that have been sterilized and you put them on the jar after you've made sure to take out air bubbles, one, and clean the rim of the jar because that will prevent a nice seal if there's anything stuck on the rim. And then you take those jars and you put them back in the canner. You then bring the canner back up to a boil and set an alarm or a timer. In our case, it's 25 minutes because it's 15 minutes at sea level and additional 10 for being here at 4,500 feet. That's boiling. Now I'm gonna do some more canning while I wait. Cause while I have this much water hot on my stove, I might as well do a lot of canning. Okay, time to come out. So 
Now these are gonna have to sit for 24 hours in a cool kind of dark place so that we can see if they seal up. I'm gonna go put them in our office area. Um, the best sound ever is after a little while when they start to cool and you hear it go boop, and that means it's sealing. Oh, I need the... And the final step, the last step, is 24 hours later, going around and checking to make sure that they've all sealed and anything that didn't seal, you have to eat or put in the fridge and eat right away. Um, eat within the next week or two because it's only in the fridge. Um, everything else, if it's sealed up, should be good to go, can last a year or two. Ours never lasts that long, <laughs> um, but that's about how long they should be able to last. So this works, this canning process works for all sorts of water canning. Um, the exact steps for the making of the thing and the headspace and the amount of time and all that will change based on whether it's a jam and everything else. But again, I highly recommend using a recipe book that's like Ball is a very good name and has been around for a very long time um, or a recipe that you trust strongly because you want to make sure the acidity is right, the cooking time is right, the headspace is right. A couple quick tips uh, that I've learned sometimes the hard way. When you're putting the jars into the water, when you're trying to sterilize them and they're open, make sure to tilt the jars away from you. Don't just like try to put them straight down because the water will rush into the jar and rush back out and, and kind of put boiling water all over you. So be careful, don't burn yourself. So if you want to get into canning after listening to all of this, a few very simple things you can do right now. First thing, get yourself a book or a reference like this, or the USDA has one as well, um, that has recipes and how to's and equipment and everything like that. So you have a one-stop shop. There is stuff on the internet, but this is a much more reliable source. Two, get yourself some jars um, and make sure that you have nice new lids. And three, find some recipes and set aside some time and get some nice fresh produce and get yourself going. Try, try it and see. You can always start with something small and, uh, and go from there. It is the next day and we're tearing into some of the salsas that were ran a little bit over into a jar that we could not can. We're just trying them during lunch and way better than store-bought salsa. Like, not even close. They turned out so good. Mm. So good. Mm. This is the peach one we did. This is a corn. Um, the one that we showed you, the jalapeno, we haven't, that one fit perfectly. That one fit so perfectly. We didn't have an extra. No, no extra on that one, but <clears throat> extra on these? So good, yep. so good. We'll go check on those cans here in a second. Mm. Look at the gloriousness. Oh. They all feel sealed to me. It's always good to just check though and just see if you can pull this up. And if you can't, tighten that down and you're good to go. So I just need to go through and write what these are. And uh, yeah, labeling's probably a good idea. Yeah because there's a lot of different salsas here. And when we made them, so we make sure we eat them in time. Not that that is ever a problem. All right, so I guess that's, I guess that's, that's it. That's it. Job well done. Job well done. Hope you guys learned something and maybe inspired you to get to canning. And for those of you who have canned a lot more than me, tips would be appreciated. So put them in the comment below. Thank mm -hmm. you.